So you want to manifest something, but it seems impossible. You do what all the experts say, but instead of manifesting the thing that you want, you manifest some old patterns again and again. Well, if that's the case, your shadow may be in the way. So if you don't do shadow work like we discussed today, the following will happen. You set your goals, you work on them, you visualize, you do all the things and they begin to work. But then suddenly your shadow kicks in. And that means it lowers your vibration, you repeat old patterns and you can never reach what you would be able to. So yes, shadow work is crucial. And in this video you learn what your shadow actually is, why you should consider doing shadow work and the most common and effective shadow work technique. All in this ultimate guide for shadow work beginners. So hi, I'm Patricia Andrea, I'm a spiritual life coach and a manifesting expert. And I want to make you a manifesting expert as well. If you want to make 2024 your year, the year that you level up, the year that you remove the blocks in your subconscious mind, those shadows that make your life so difficult, and the year in which you begin to manifest your dream life, then why are you still waiting to apply for the one-on-one -on -one shadow light manifestation coaching? So applications are finally open. You can find the link in the description down below. And the spots fill up pretty fast because I can't take an unlimited amount of people because I'm putting a lot of energy and time into these one-on-one -on -one coachings. So don't wait to apply. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. What is the shadow? When I was at university studying psychology, the psychiatrist C.G. Jung was always a big topic. Not only because he is Swiss as well, and he studied in the city where I grew up, but because he is to this day an important influence in psychology. And not only in psychology, also in spiritual topics and for coaches and for many people that work with the topic of soul, of being, of self-improvement and of the subconscious. Jung was also influenced by Sigmund Freud and they also worked together. But Jung then made his own thing. He went a bit away from Freud's teaching. That's why usually at the universities, there are the people that are the Freud people and the Jung people, but that's another story. And Jung said that there are parts in us that are not resolved and that they affect you until you resolve them. So let's say you had parents that fought together all the time. And then as a child, you stopped believing in love. It felt unsafe. It felt like something that is really not okay. She did not believe in real love anymore and that's why until this day you are sabotaging relationships. That's only one example but there will be more in a moment. When you begin to dig deep into the topic of subconscious and shadow, you find out and you understand that every pattern that you are living right now roots in childhood. It is something that you are suppressing since then. And I know some people say that not everything not every of these patterns or these shadows root in childhood. They say, for example, oh, but my bad relationship that I had a couple of years ago influenced me and influenced me still. And that's why now I have issues with trusting someone. But the thing is, that bad relationship happened because there was already something in you that you were suppressing from childhood. It's like a spiral, you could say. And oftentimes we don't even know what it is. So it seems like this one relationship a couple of years ago, that's the one that brought this shadow to me. That's the thing that influenced me now. And that's because you're unconscious of other things that happened during your childhood. Believe me, it's all a spiral. Everything comes back again until it's resolved. Important also for you to know is that every shadow has a positive intent. That means your shadow never ever wants to harm you. It never wanted to harm you. It was formed to protect you or give you some other benefits. So here's some examples. Let's say your father left you and your mother when you were really young and you and your mother were suffering because of that. And your shadow then formed in the following way. It was a part of you that decided that you don't want to suffer like this anymore, that you don't want to see your mother suffering like this anymore. So this part of you decided that it is better to never trust, trust anyone anymore. Because when you trust someone, let this person into your life, it could be that this person will leave you and then you will suffer and maybe your mother will suffer again. So it protects you from not getting harmed again. Another example. You had to be a certain way so that your parents love and accept you. 
let's say you were a child that loved to sing out loud, but your parents got annoyed because they had to work or they had other people in the house that were angry because you were too loud. And so you began to understand that when you are too loud, when you sing, then people get angry at you. And when people get angry at you, at least as a child, as a small little thing, the only thing that you then understand is they don't love me anymore. They don't give me love. And so because of that, as an adult, you have problems to expressing yourself. Maybe you don't share your voice. You're never too loud. What is important really to understand is that from the age of zero to eight, everything is formed like in the brain and, and in the subconscious, because most of the time as a child, you do not think consciously about the things. Like when something happened, you are not ra racializing it. You're not thinking, oh, that happened because of this and that. Of course, my parents are angry when I'm too loud because they have to focus on something else right now. I sing later, then it's fine. No, as a child, you just get all these energies. You just see the reactions. You can't understand why something happens. You just feel the feelings. Before I explain you why you should consider doing shadow work, I want to share some other words, some other names for your shadow. Limiting beliefs, subconscious blocks, past traumas, memories, and suppressed parts of yourself. Good and bad ones. So why doing shadow work? I always knew that shadow work is important, but I never expected that it is the one thing that you need to go through if you really want to manifest your dream life, more money, love, or whatever you want. The more people I'm coaching, the more I see that. In my Shadow Light Manifestation Coaching Program, shadow work is a big, big part. That's why also the name, shadow and light. Because without looking at the shadow, we can live in the light. The shadow must be integrated. So thanks to the shadow work and the work that we do in the coaching, my clients are able to manifest what seemed impossible before. The results are incredible, to be honest. Things that seemed impossible for years that they tried to, to manifest and again and again with everything, with everything that all these experts like me are saying, and it did not work. And when we begin to do all this shadow work together, they begin to manifest anything they wanted. More income, self-confidence. One of my clients even met her soulmate by the end of the coaching. And I want to be honest here, the shadow work that we do in the shadow light manifestation coaching is profound shadow work. That is nearly impossible to do by your own. So if you want to do some really profound shadow work, it's best to do it with a coach or a therapist. But there's a great shadow work technique that you can do by your own that I teach you in this video. So, but why do all this work? Isn't focusing on a shadow something negative? Shouldn't we be focusing on, on the good and positive all the time, being high vibrational and just thinking good thoughts? Yes, that's great. Do that, of course. Be high vibrational. Raise your vibration as much as you can. But the thing is, if you still have shadows that are hidden in your subconscious, you can do whatever you want. You can raise your vibration as much as you want, but this shadow will always play out in your life. I always like to explain how the subconscious works with the elephant and the rider on top. The subconscious is the elephant and your conscious mind is the rider. So when you, with your conscious mind, are beginning to do all your visualization practice, you focus on positive thoughts, you raise your vibration, well, great, you want to go in that direction of positivity. That's amazing, amazing. But the thing is, if you're elephant or if something in your elephant, in your subconscious is dark, is a shadow, is an old pattern, is a limiting belief that is there, it will still play out. So you can do whatever you want. You can want to go to this side the whole time and manifest what you want, but it will not work because the elephant is bigger than you. The elephant is influencing you more than anything else. And that means for you, same old patterns, same old things. You are not able to manifest what you want. You see others manifesting what they want, but you are not able to do it. So because your shadow roots in childhood, it means that you are suppressing a part of yourself. You can also call it inner child. Shadow work often is called and seen as inner child work. So the shadow will always play out in your life as long as you are ignoring it, suppressing it or pushing it away. You can imagine 
a child, your inner child, yourself as a child standing outside and want to come in. It knocks at the door, it tries to come in, it screams, it screams, like, please, please let me in, it cries. It does everything for attention, for unconditional attention and love. But if you are not opening the door, it doesn't mean that it goes away. No, it will knock even louder. It will scream even louder. And that inner child is a part of you. The shadow is a part of you. I heard part of you. And it simply wants to be integrated. Because as it is a part of you, it will never go away. But you have the possibility to heal it and to integrate it. As long as you are not integrating it, it will sabotage your results. And usually you don't even realize that you have it. You're just asking yourself, why can't I manifest what I want? So now you learn a shadow work technique that you can do by yourself. So the goal of shadow work is see and understand the positive intent and so we frame why that shadow exists. Heal it and integrate it. So step number one, decide what you want to work on. So is it a lack of confidence that's holding you back? Lack of self-love? Is it anger or the thought that you're not good enough? Do you feel confused or not loved? Or you can't love yourself? Or simply ask yourself, what is holding you back? When you have that, you know what you want to work on. Step number two is see the shadow. So I'll give you two examples here from my life. One of my shadows, it was about, and I think not, not feeling good enough. And my shadow looked like this. It was a, a lady, a woman that was starving, like really, really thin and like pale. And she was nervous walking around all the time. And she was not, not calm, not relaxed, not healthy. This is how my not feeling good enough looked like. And another time when it was about a traumatic event in my childhood, I s the, the shadow was me as a baby. And a friend of mine, her shadows usually look like really ugly monsters. And if this part is tricky for you and you ask yourself, how on earth should I see my shadow? Do it in the following way. Close your eyes and imagine how could this feeling, let's say of lack of confidence, anger, sadness, how could that look like? And the first thing that comes to your mind, don't overthink it. Don't look for it. Just the first image that you have in your mind, that's your shadow. That's how it looks like. And it can be anything, really, it can be anything. Step number three, begin a conversation. Still, if that's tricky for you, imagine that you are talking to your shadow. Really close your eyes, ask the questions that I will talk about in a moment, and then just the first answer that pops into your mind is the answer from your shadow. But if you are good in visualizing things, imagine that this shadow that you have seen is sitting or standing in front of you. Or if it's wandering around like my starving lady, still begin a conversation. Ask your shadow, why are you here? Why are you doing this? And please don't analyze the answers. No judgment. Just let your intuition guide you. Listen to your shadow. Be unconditional present with your shadow. Unconditional presence is healing. That's what is healing. So be there, ask and be there, listen to the answers. And if there's no answers coming, just be there, sit there and wait. So I repeat, you decided what you want to work on. You know now how your shadow looks like and you begin the conversation. Now step number four is ask what your shadow needs. If your shadow wants to resolve a past experience, then go with your shadow to that old memory. Go with your shadow into the past. The linear time that we know here on earth actually does not exist, all happens at the same time. So I don't want to go into that topic too much now, um, but when you are doing something now, you can hear something that happened in the past because it was not really gone. It was not in the past. It all happening right now. So if everything happens right now, it means that you can heal it right now. You can change your past. And if your shadow wants to go and change something in your past, wants to go and heal a situation, then go with it. Go together, see that memory, see what happened there, and then give your shadow or your inner child or however your shadow looks like what it needed in that moment. So maybe if it's your inner child, you as a child, then maybe needed some love, some acceptance, some food or whatever. And then in your imagination, give it to your inner self, your inner child, your shadow. 
Or it could also be that your shadow wants something else. My starving lady shadow, for example, wanted first simply food. She wanted to eat with me. She wanted to do yoga. She wanted to do nothing, just relax and be really calm and being in the feminine energy. And so I did that. Step number five, integrate it. So if it feels right for you in that moment, then when you feel like everything is resolved, you did what you could do and you gave your shadow what it needed, ask your shadow if it's ready to integrate with you, to become one with you, to merge with you finally. Because remember, it's not something outside of you. It is a part of you. It's just a part that you were suppressing. So if it feels right for you, it's the best if you can integrate it and become one. And look, important is to do the thing, to do the shadow work, to do this technique, because just hear it when I talk about it, you don't know what magic can happen. It's really, really an important work, that shadow work. But you have to do it. You not simply have to read about it and listen and, and watch something about it. No, you have to do it for yourself to see how much it can change your life. And there's no perfect way to do this. The technique that I shared now, it's a good and easy technique, but there's no right or wrong. It's all right. There's no right or wrong how your shadow should look like. And if you have to go into the past and, and resolve something or do yoga or whatever, no, there's no right or wrong. Do it in your way. Listen to your intuition. So what are your next steps? Do this technique every time that you feel a shadow comes up or you feel that a repeating pattern comes up or a limiting belief. It can take a while for it to be really resolved because you are working on different layers. So it can be that the same topic comes up again and again. So it may take a while and that's okay. Or if you decide that you want to level up faster and go through all these layers faster, then apply for the shadow light manifestation coaching. I put the link down in the description. And if you want to know more about the subconscious and how it works, watch this video next. Thank you for being here and see you in the next one. Bye.